Shalom, shalom, and happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm going to be reading as we open from Matthew chapter 28. After the Shabbat, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, rolled away the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards trembled in fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Yeshua, Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we serve a risen Savior. Glory to God. And we are so blessed that we can celebrate Resurrection Sunday together today. Well, we're going to open in prayer, and then we are going to sing a chorus, and join me as I sing, and then we will partake of the table of communion together. So I hope you have your elements. If you don't, now would be the time to go get them. And then we're going to get back to our series on the seven places Jesus shed his precious blood. And I'm so excited um, to complete that series today on this Resurrection Sunday. Oh, Father, Abba, we bless your name together. We extol your name. Oh, you are worthy of our praise and our adoration. We do not lightly esteem the gathering, the assembling together today as we worship you. And as we look to your word today, may Holy Spirit illuminate it to us. For our desire is to worship you in spirit and in truth. To build one another up in the faith and to reach out to a lost and dying world. Father, we pray this in the name above every name. The name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, we are going to, let's just sing the chorus. I don't know if you know this, um, pollens are high right now, <clears throat> and I've got the plants, but it's not about, join me, if you will. It's a, it's a little chorus that I don't know, we haven't actually sung it in the church, I think, for years, but it's one that I often sing. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful Nothing I desire compares to you. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Your word says 
You send not your son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he who believes is not condemned, but he who has not believed already is condemned. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood that paid the debt for our sins once and for all. You died, was buried, and hallelujah, on the third day rose from the dead. You are alive, you are risen, and we rejoice. We will never forget that on the night you were betrayed. You took the bread and broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. You told us to do this in remembrance of you. In like manner, you took the cup when it was poured out and said, this cup is a new covenant, a better covenant made between the Father and you, and we get all the benefits. Thank you, Jesus. A new covenant in your blood. And so as we partake today, we do so with awesome reverence. We do not lightly esteem. And we recognize the full impact, the full benefits as children of God, heirs of God, and co-heirs with you, Jesus. Father, your word says that after we have believed, we are seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. And so as we partake, we do so with gratitude and praise. We don't have the words to express our thanksgiving to you. And we pray this in the name above every name. The name that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. The name of Yeshua HaMashiach, of Jesus Messiah, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's partake of the bread together. And we'll partake of the cup. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you. We magnify. We extol your name. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh Lord. I as we go to your word in Jesus name amen so we've been talking about the seven places Jesus Yeshua shed his blood week one we talked about Gethsemane how that won back our willpower week two we talked about the stripes on his back 
how it won back our health. Week three, we talked about the crown of thorns won back our provision. Week four, we talked about his pierced hands won back the things we touch. Week five, we talked about his pierced feet, how it won back dominion over the places we walk. Last week, we talked about Jesus' pierced heart won back our joy. And today, we are going to talk about Jesus' bruises won our deliverance from inner hurts and iniquities. Praise God. Boy, I'll tell you what, it seems like the past six, seven weeks, eight with two months have just, since the beginning of the year, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we are on warp speed. I mean, it just seems that way. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The seventh place Jesus shed his blood was in his bruises. He went to the gates of hell and took back the keys to the kingdom to break every curse of iniquity. Not only was he wounded for our transgressions, this verse says, and, and many people get that part, he was wounded for our transgression. The verse also says, he was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquity means a wicked act or sin. Iniquity can also be understood as any spirit that tries to break us down. It is a spiritual force on the inside that pressures us to bow or bend under its destructive nature. You've often heard me say, iniquity is our bent toward sin. If you have bruises or on your body, it means you are bleeding on the inside. Some bruises can last a long time and go very deep. God said, not only will I forgive what you've done on the outside, but I'm going to give you power on the inside so you can walk in victory. When we talk about breaking generational curses, we are not talking about struggling against a character weakness for the rest of your life, nor a family curse for the rest of your life. We're talking about being redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus to wipe away our sin and to set us free from the iniquity that drives us to do the very things we don't want to do. 2 Corinthians 5, 15 to 17. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now at the end of, we're talking about the bruises now, I'm going to go over the gospel. And we know that we are 2 Corinthians 5.21. For God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin. He knew no sin. He always was God. The part of the, he is the eternally self-existing God um, in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus, Yeshua, is the second person of the Godhead. And so we're talking about Jesus left glory, laid down his glory was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary to pay the debt for our sins once and for all. All sufficient, past, present, and future sins, and the nanosecond you believe on him, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified. Amen? Until the day of redemption. So when it says, for God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, 
that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Sin, once you believe, can no longer be imputed to your account. Judicially, we are justified just as if we never sinned because Jesus paid the debt. When he cried out on the cross, to tell us die, it is finished. The debt is paid in full. The job is completely done. Hallelujah. Jesus did that. Have you believed on the Son of God? Romans 10, 13 says, all, all, it means everyone, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said John 3, 16 in the prayer earlier, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm a whosoever. Are you a whosoever? And aren't you thankful for the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross at Calvary? And so, when someone we're going to go back to this, the bruise. I'm going to get back to the gospel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There's some who haven't heard this, and we're going to get to it today. When someone has... Uh, well, let me read this passage again. From 2 Corinthians 5, 15, verse 15 and verse 17. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When someone has suffered a physical strike or a blow, they develop a discolored bruise. Yet a person who has been bruised on the inside often doesn't show that hurt on the outside, and I'm sure that many of you can, uh, can testify to this. We'll go around and ask one another, how you doing? How are you today? And often people just give a, re uh, you know, a polite reply, and we'll say, oh, I'm doing great, or I'm doing good. Hey, man, I'm doing wonderful. Whatever it is that you say, but really, many times on the inside, we're saying in ourselves, I'm doing horrible. I'm hurting. This is the worst time in my life. But we don't come out and say that, you know, that things are bad. We'll say that things are great, things are good, even though on the inside, that's not really what's going on. And often people have said on the outside, how many people have we heard about? And listen, we need to pray. Suicide attempts and suicides are at an all time high. And I want to say, if someone's watching this today and you are suicidal, please, contact us please please god loves you we love you that is not his design for your life that is the enemy attacking you that could be past hurts coming forth in your life we we want to help you with that so there is help available and so but back to the point people can say on the outside i'm doing great i'm doing wonderful and on the inside they're dying on the inside an example might be a woman might be sitting in the pew singing, What a mighty God we serve. Great song. And clapping her hands, joining everyone else alongside her. But inside, she's grieving. She feels lonely and doesn't know how to have friends. Many times through decades, as I have been in pastoral counseling situations, many, many have had things that have happened even as children. Maybe she was molested as a child and she's bruised on the inside. When a part of our body gets bruised, that area becomes tender, and we don't want anyone touching it because it hurts too much. There are actually people who have buried, or it's you know recessed within them, that they bury it, the pain is so deep, but that bruise is still on the inside. Our bruises don't always show, do they? We put, it, we put on a good face, and cover it up because we are people of faith, especially in the church. We're people of faith. We don't want anyone knowing what we're going through. I'll tell you, there's joy. There's joy. 
when you place your trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Don't worry about what people think. We are, as a body of Christ, we are here to worship him in spirit and in truth, build one another up in the faith, and reach out to a lost and dying world. We want to bear one another's burdens. We love you. Please know this. God loves you fiercely and passionately. We love you too. And you're not alone. So our bruises don't always show. We put on that good faith. However, on the inside, we are desperately hurting at times. We've been knocked down, ground down, and beaten down, kicked around. And we think that because we are overcoming, we are never to let anyone know about this. And for the record, salvation is an event. When you admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior and believe on the finished work of Jesus, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. People misappropriate that scripture. And so people go around, no, I'm, I'm walking victorious. I'm, listen. It's all about Jesus, brothers and sisters. We couldn't save ourselves. We can't keep ourselves saved. And even Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. Then verse 10 goes on to say, For we are created in his workmanship unto good works, which he prepared beforehand or preordained. As we know our identity in Christ, once we are born again and we are in Christ, Holy Spirit does that work. We can't even take credit for it. We can't do anything apart from Jesus. Amen? To God be all the glory. This is why Jesus did it. He redeemed us. You know, as we've gone through, can you see the pattern? Christ redeemed us. Hallelujah. It's glorious. It's glorious. When someone is bruised, it means he or she is bleeding, not on the outside, but on the inside. God said, not only will I forgive what he's done on the outside, but I'm going to change that person on the inside. Jesus shed his precious blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on the inside as well as on the outside. He was bruised inside to change the person on the inside. To change the nature that causes him hurt or suffering. Through Jesus shed blood. We are not just free. We are free indeed. 2 Corinthians 5.21. I'm going to say it again. For he made him who knew no sin. To be sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Brothers and sisters, I know many of you that are saved and no one's ever given you the message that Jesus, hallelujah, redeemed us. You get your salvation but do you understand that we can have that peace and that joy that comes only from being born again? From admitting you're a sinner in need of a Savior and believing on the Son of God. It is glorious. Does it mean we won't be attacked? No way. Does it mean you won't have struggles and, and fall down? No way. You never lose your sonship. Isn't that glorious? But he's there for you. And we want to speak the word over our lives. This is why we often talk about, as believers, the nanosecond, I love that word, you believed. You are saved, sealed, and sanctified indwelt with Holy Spirit. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are seated in the heavenlies in Christ. That's the way God sees you. That's the way Abba sees you. 
in Christ. Don't, don't allow the past to strangle, to have strongholds in your life. And that doesn't mean you're not saved. You want to know something? We've all had and we get strongholds. Strongholds are lies that we believe to be truths that work against the purpose and plan of God in our lives. He loves you. He loves you. And as we have gone through, as we have gone through, I want to read those again. As we have gone through, Gethsemane, won back our willpower. This is his shed blood. The stripes on his back won back our help. The crown of thorns won back our provision. His pierced hands won back the things we touch. His pierced feet won back dominion over the places we walk. His pierced heart won back our joy. And his bruises won our deliverance from inner hurts and iniquities. Oh, how awesome is our God. And I would be remiss if I did not talk about on this Resurrection Sunday. There's so much, so much that we can talk about. But earlier, as you know, I paused. I felt Holy Spirit leading me to share this with you. And I think there are many who may not even know this. So I want you to understand this. A couple things. First of all, in the Old Testament, when they would bring the animal to be sacrificed and they would place their hands on the head of the animal, that represented the transference of their sin onto that animal. In other words, their sin imputed to that animal, right, to pay the penalty for their debt. Now look at this. They would have to keep sacrificing animals, right? But the precious blood of Jesus paid the debt once and for all. And when he hung on that cross. Now, as we've gone through, we've talked a lot about what Jesus went through. Oh, brothers and sisters, I don't want to go there today. Even today, and there are many times I weep when I think about what Jesus did for me. That's his love for us. As we went through and we talked about the scourging, and I don't want to talk about it again today. Um, as we talked about the, everything he went through, the mocking, the spitting on him, the crown of thorns. You know, the prophet Isaiah gives us a really good depiction that he was so marred, he was so beaten, he took it, he took it all for us that you would not have even recognized him. Some scholars say you wouldn't have even recognized him barely as human. But you, and Jesus hung on that cross. Naked, not like Hollywood depicts it. He was naked. His mother was watching as her son hung on that cross. As Savior of the world. <laughs> the blood of Jesus that he shed for us. This is God's love for us. This is how much he loves you. He did it. And he conquered. He shed his blood. It paid the debt once and for all. You know, justice would be getting what we deserve. Mercy is not get, getting what we deserve. But the grace of God is getting what we don't deserve. His unmerited favor. Not only did Jesus pay the debt for us. Listen, if if. My associate, Pastor Greg, killed someone else. I don't even want to name a name. And he's in court. And he's guilty. And the judge is going to give the death sentence. And I was permitted to go up and say, yes, I know there has to be a penalty, but I'll take his place. Take me instead. That, that would be amazing, right? Right? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But it goes further, brothers and sisters. Jesus not only died in our place to pay the debt for our sins. And so when you look at people 
and you think they're so evil, they're so wicked, remember, prior to believing on him, that's who we are. And God loves that evil, wicked person so much so that Jesus shed his blood to pay the debt once and for all if they would but believe. And it's so precious. It's so amazing. So I can't even use an example to illustrate or compare. But let's say that Pastor Greg did that. He killed someone. And the judge would let me speak. And I say, take me instead. I'll be the one to die in his place. I'll take his place. That would be amazing. But then I say, but there's more. All my inheritance, every benefit, every blessing I have, I'm imputing to him. Because the Bible says when we believe, this is how awesome our God is. It's his unmerited favor that when we believe, we are born again. We become children of God, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Do you realize what that means? That's what Jesus did for us. And he hung on that cross. Oh, he paid the debt. But brothers and sisters, and he died. He was buried. He conquered hell, death, and the grave. And on the third day, he rose again. Hallelujah. The tomb is empty. And one day soon, the same way he left, he's going to come back in the air. And he's going to get his bride. Glory to God. Well, there's one more thing I want to share with you. As we are still in the Passover season as well, you know when, when they were slaves in the land of Goshen in Egypt, the Israelites... And the plague came of death of the firstborn. And they were given a prescription. A way. They were to get a lamb. And the blood was applied to the tops and sides of the door. And if they were in the house, if they were under the blood, death passed over. Death and judgment passed over. At no time. Did the Lord say, but you know, if you've had a bad thought or if you fornicated or if you stole, you're not covered. He never said that. If you are in the house under the blood, then death and judgment passes over. Jesus is referred to as the Lamb of God. John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. When Jesus shed his blood, it was once for all. There is no more need for the blood of animals because our precious Savior did it all. And he rose again. There's so much more we could talk about. I pray if you're watching this and you've never admitted you're a sinner in need of a Savior and believe on the Son of God. I implore you to do so today. We call it the ABCs of salvation. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe on Jesus, on the Son of God, and his finished work on the cross at Calvary. And then C, call upon his name or confess. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes and is justified, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I beseech you, I implore you, if you have not believed, today is your day of salvation. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he hung between two thieves. I'm going to give you the, the Tim paraphrase. One thief, like those mocking, said, you know, save yourself, save us. 
as they were mocking Jesus. If you're the son of God, save yourself. The one thief challenged him. If you are, right? Save me. The other one, the other one said, he has done nothing to deserve this. We have. And he said to him, remember me. When you are in paradise, and Jesus told him that he would be with him that day. Do you know, in, in one of the gospel accounts, there was a centurion who was watching everything going on. And after Jesus cried out and gave up the ghost, that centurion said, surely he was the son of God. He is Jesus, Yeshua, Mashiach, Messiah. He lived a perfect life. Son of God, God the Son. Son of God, Son of Man. Left glory, laid down his glory. Was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh. Lived a perfect life. Never sinned and shed his precious blood. He was our lamb, our Passover lamb without spot or wrinkle. And he did it. Hallelujah. He accomplished the will of the Father. He died in our place. And when we believe on him, oh, we are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. We have so much to be thankful for and rejoice because he is alive. Hallelujah. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted on you and his shalom, his peace, perfect, whole, complete, nothing lacking, nothing missing, be yours in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Messiah, I pray and I bless you. Wherever you are today, I just want to say, Shalom, Shalom.